Hey, uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening from wherever you're at. Uh, welcome to episode 19 of Job Seeker Live Talk. Uh, and I'd like to welcome everybody on from LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, watching us live on YouTube even. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, you know, during our episodes, we're going to be sharing how job seekers can best position themselves in today's job market. And we're going to be providing various topics from resume tips, interview advice, and the real struggles that a lot of job seekers are having at landing that new career today. So let's get right to it. So today, my guest is Luis Lee. How, how are you doing? I'm great. I totally wasn't ready for that. Hi, everyone. Ah, who cares? <laughs> I was matter. like fiddling around with my rings <laughs> and you know all that kind of stuff. Hello, uh, hi David. Hello, <laughs> yes. Uh, we attempted to do this last week. Um, internet was great. LinkedIn decided it wanted to have some issues with live, you know, and you just got to roll with things. Uh, and you know what? I know sometimes job seekers have uh, you know those struggles and got to kind of roll with the punches a little bit there. But anyway, thank you for coming back uh you know i invited you onto the show because i know with the people that you help i know uh because maybe we've chatted a couple times i know the value that you can provide uh job seekers uh so uh welcome so you know what tell everybody that maybe doesn't know exactly what you do tell us all about you <laughs> Thank you, David. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Louise Lee, and I am a certified uh, leadership and life coach based in Vancouver, BC, in Canada. And you know how sometimes when you are working in a job and you feel as though you're not doing your very best, either at work or even at home, maybe the balance isn't quite right between your work and your home, especially during the pandemic and hybrid and remote working. Or maybe you see these other jobs and opportunities and you're kind of thinking, you know, what would it be like to get it? Can I get it? What do I need to do to get it? Well, I help people just like you not only figure out what it is you actually want and want to do in your life and in your career, but I help you get there. I help you turn it into a reality. And we look and explore at all the things that might be in your way and we start shifting them. We start moving them. So that's in a nutshell kind of what I do. Every time I, because I've spied on your on your uh, website a couple of times and you can, that what you just said is exactly, you know, what you say on your website. But um, the way you deliver that uh, makes me want to hire you. And I don't think I, I don't know if I need that much help right now, but, uh, it does, it does because I know the value, uh, that you provide. So listen, everybody, um, we have seven people live on LinkedIn. We've got one person from YouTube. So, Hey, if you are watching us on Facebook, watching us on YouTube, LinkedIn, make sure, make sure, oh, we got some comments already. So we're going to go, we're going to go right to them. Uh, just see where everybody is at. Make sure to, to tell us where you're watching us. Uh, if you're on, again, Facebook, YouTube, or LinkedIn, and where in the U.S. or uh, in the world. So hello from Iran. Hello, hello, all over the place, all over the place. And um, yes, uh, we are happy to see you as well. And from Sudan, wow, again. Um, and, and if, and, hey, uh, if you have questions, put them down in the comments. And, uh, oh, and Ricardo from Chicago. So perfect, perfect, perfect. So, and you know what? I've never asked this of our uh, guests, um, not the guests, but uh, people watching us, but why are you here? So why did you, did, did you come here uh, just to see me? I doubt it. Did you, did you come here to learn some, uh, you know, job seeking tips or advice? Uh, and if you did, uh, you know, again, tell us. Uh, so, hey, uh, hello from Egypt. Yes. Uh, Joseph, hello from Miami. Wow. See, we got a lot of people uh, 
got a lot of people here today. So, uh, but feel free to put your questions down below and we'll get right to it. So what made you go down the path of what you're doing today? There's got to be some kind of uh, backstory there. Oh my goodness, is there a backstory? <laughs> like how, how far back do I go, David? How much time do we have? Well, uh, yeah, not that long. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll keep it pretty brief. Um, if anyone's curious for the longer story, just get in touch and I'll be happy to share. But the, the brief story is, and let's see if any of you listening can identify with this. When I, uh, after I graduated from university, I'm, I, I promise it won't take too long, even though I'm going back that far. After I graduated from university, I didn't actually know what I wanted to do as a job, as a career. My parents had a certain vision for me. You know how that happens with some of you. And uh, so I just kind of thought, well, I will do a corporate job. That was kind of the background I came with from my family. So I, I will do that. I will take a very well-respected corporate job. And I did. I joined Deloitte Consulting as a graduate consultant. I was like 21 and I had they gave me a laptop. I had to wear a suit, you know, with stockings and everything. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm I'm important now. I've made it. And so I started to climb up the corporate ladder and let's see if you can identify with this. I was successful on the outside, but I felt empty on the inside. I remember working on all these client projects and staying with these really nice hotels and being really grateful for having that opportunity to make a difference to my clients. But I would sit in hotel rooms on my own on like a Tuesday night and just kind of be like, is this my life now? There's something missing. But the trick was I didn't know what was missing. And so fast forward a few years and I move here to Vancouver from London, England, where I was originally from. And I moved up the ranks in terms of project management, but also managing people and departments, both in England and here. And a friend of mine came to me when I was here in Vancouver and said, hey, we're looking actually for somebody to teach project management. And I remember saying to him, I was like, maybe I shouldn't be saying this live on a video that will be on the Internet forever. But I remember saying to him, um, I'm not qualified to teach and he said no 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 this is fine you have years and years decades of industry experience I've worked with you on the projects you're great they're gonna love you we want industry experience so I said okay you know one three hour lesson a week that'll be fun and oh my god David that turned into for me one of my most fulfilling jobs that I've done and it wasn't so much the teaching of project management and Gantt charts and risk logs it wasn't that it was getting to experience and be part of every single one of those students' journeys for their very intense year at that particular school and getting to coach them and mentor them, getting to answer their questions, getting to experience their journey with them as they were going through their own transformation from who they were before, in the, before they joined the program to who they were afterwards with a whole new career opportunity. And now, you know, years later, seeing them completely flourish um, just before coming on this live, I received a message on LinkedIn from one of my former students. It it brought me so much joy when they get in touch and they're like, oh, my God. And so that's how when I look back in my career, I'm like, what was the turning point? It was that it was making a difference to other people. And I thought, how can I do that in a way that really works? And I thought coaching. Let's do coaching full time. And so that's pretty much what I do now. I run workshops. I do. I facilitate training, but I do coaching one on one. And I love it. The impact on others is just so amazing. Uh, you know, you said you said something uh, very interesting that, you know, somebody came to you and wanted you to teach something, even though you're like, oh, I've never done that. I can't do that. I think we all can experience. I know I went through that. Um, uh, a little over uh, a little over a year ago, and then maybe half, uh, uh, and then almost a year ago, uh, when somebody asked me to do something that I've never really done before. But listen, people have a lot more confidence in ourselves than than we do sometimes. So, and and you know what? Sometimes it takes a, a coach to to help us through that. Uh, sometimes um, maybe we fail and then we learn from that but uh you know a, a coach is where that definitely that uh, that can help but that really that, that's uh thank you for sharing that um i want you everybody to make sure that you stick around because we're gonna have a little special added value at the end to those that stick around and maybe do something else but uh i know that you're gonna provide shortly not right now but uh some uh, free like best practices and stuff. Uh, all people have to do is, you know, uh, you know, message you uh, on your website, and we'll talk more about that. But we have some 
we have some good, really good questions. So, uh, Ricardo, um, or maybe just a, a comment. Uh, I've been doing the same job for 20 years and I want to get out of my industry I'm currently in. How does somebody like that? I, I mean, I, I know we don't, we don't, don't know Ricardo, but I mean, how, how, how do, do we, how do we start with that? I mean, how do we, geez, I mean, I was in my previous industry for almost that same, you know, length of time. How do you, you feel like you're trapped and you might not, you know, I can't do, how, how do I do anything else? Right. Um, how does one start to identify other yeah. industries or positions? Yeah, that's such a great question, David, because I really feel that's such a timely question right now, because so many people, it's the great resignation. You probably know about this and so do our viewers. So there are a few things that we can do. First of all, I loved what you mentioned about that feeling of feeling trapped. I think so many of us stay in jobs and careers that we know aren't right for us. We know aren't for want of sounding cheesy, you know, we know, that's not why we're here, right, in the world. And yet we stay there because we have this idea that we need certain things in our life. Now, don't get me wrong, we need certain things to survive. We need to be able to pay the bills and have a roof over our head. But a lot of us conflate, you know, the need for success and we don't take the moment to define actually what is important to us, what success is. And so if you are considering, like Ricardo, a career change, if you know what it is, then definitely there are things that you can do. And don't feel as though you've got to do all or nothing. Don't feel as though you have to dramatically quit your day job and then you know dramatically start your own business or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be like that. It can definitely be kind of like getting your toes wet step by step. And that might be starting with finding people in your network or your friends' networks who are doing what you are curious about. You don't have to commit to anything at this point, right? It was like when I started teaching, I didn't know. I talked to a couple of teachers, asked them about it, and I thought, I'll give it a go. And that's, you only know by trying. So I would suggest that people go find people and have a chat with them, buy them coffee or a virtual coffee, and just, just ask them loads of questions about what they do, find out more about it, and go and go and actually try if you can. So if there are volunteering, and you can, you have the time and resources to do that, and that might be an option for you. Um, and, th and there might be other opportunities as well to do it on a part-time basis. But there could be a whole richness there where if you just get your feet wet somehow, then you can actually figure out whether this is a path you want to continue going on. Okay. No, I, I think, uh, you know, you, you have to take the time when when the emotions are, you know, while you're feeling, you know, uh, feeling those great feelings to yes, try. Cause that's what, I mean, I, I volunteered at our local unemployment office to help people with their resumes, help people with their LinkedIn. And then, you know, people were coming to me after the class. Oh, Dave, I learned so much from you. Uh, you know, and then again, you know, I did that for free, but then I got that great feeling yet again of, you know, I helped somebody. Right. So that makes me want, want to do it more. And then again, um, uh, volunteering allows you to feel, I guess, maybe more at ease. Nobody's paying you to do it, but you're honing something or you're learning where those specialties might lie. So I think volunteering is a perfect way to identify those. So um, Carol said that she was checking her notifications and she noticed that we were live. So <laughs> she jumped in. So, but Carol, was it because of me or my guest or just because? So throw that down there. Um, and, uh, you know, Joseph, uh, Joseph says, you know, people, uh, relationships are priceless. And, and sometimes fear of the unknown. You betcha. I still remember that first paid speaking gig I had. Uh, first five minutes didn't, do, didn't go so well. The rest of it I crushed actually wrote a book about it after my experience of that kind of imposter syndrome a little bit there. But uh, anyway, um, all right. So part two, Ricardo was going for a, a senior vice president role and was crushed when they picked another person. He does not know where to go from here. Obviously, you know, those positions, there's probably not a hundred thousand of them, you know, uh, uh, of those jobs out there, right? Those are a little bit more unique. Uh, Ricardo, do from here. Try to get out of that industry, applied for this other position. 
was crushed when they picked somebody else. Maybe he went a little bit. It sounds like oh, there's a one on one there, but uh, uh, definitely needed uh, between you and uh, Ricardo. But where does he go from here? That's a really good question. Um, I know how it feels to be so disappointed that the outcome wasn't what you wanted. And Ricardo, I hear you, I feel your pain, and it is okay to feel a whole mixture of things. You might feel hurt and rejected. You might also feel angry. You might also feel a bit self-righteous and be like, I'm way better than the other person. Who are they to you know, say no to me? All those things are perfectly natural to feel. So first of all, I want you to know that whatever you're feeling, it's okay, okay? Secondly, Allow time to process that emotion, but don't forget what it was that inspired you to go for that role in the first place. When you are ready, tap back into what's really important to you. Tap back into what really kind of flipped your switch and turned your lights on. I'm using all the different metaphors here. And start remembering that and start bringing more of that to what you are currently doing. So what I mean by that is a lot of us feel as though we need to uh, kind of apply for the jobs in order to get the jobs. But often we can get promotions actually come to us. And I say this from my own experience. So there was this running joke, David, between me and my mother a number of decades ago when I still lived in England, where I would call her. And every time I, I called my mother, she would pick up the phone and she'll be like, oh, it's lovely to hear from you. What news do you have? Have you got another promotion? So I, I took two things away from that, David. Number one, I need to call my mother more often. And number two, apparently I get promoted a lot and quite regularly. Right. <laughs> so anyway, so um, what I mean by that, Ricardo, and for all of you listening out there, as in like, how do I get that promotion, is you've probably heard of that saying, just step into and become the person that you want to be when you are promoted, right? So if you're going for an SVP role, become that SVP. But also don't forget that there are very unique things that you bring to your job, to your team, to your company. You have certain strengths, you have certain values, certain beliefs, and certain th things that just really light you up that you can bring. So it's re-tapping into what you are great at, making the most of what you currently have and then you might also be able to see for yourself. It's like, oh my God, actually that SVP role wasn't right for me, but I'm now seeing another opportunity here, which I'm gonna go for when I feel that much stronger and that much more experience for it. Okay, no, I like that. I think we can get, look, there might be times where we've been in one particular company or industry and we think that we need to leave, but by applying and maybe interviewing, maybe we can kind of rejuvenate some of that spark that we had for that initial company. Right. So I think that, you know, that's what you're, you know, getting at. Sometimes it doesn't always have to be going to, but you know, when, you know, and uh, Ricardo, obviously, I, you know, I don't know your background, but when's the last time that you went to, maybe you have a good relationship with somebody at HR, maybe you have a good relationship with your boss. And when's the last time that you went to that individual and say, listen, you know, I like what I'm doing, you know, or, or, or during an annual performance review, uh, I'm not being challenged enough. I'm starting to feel like I need something else. Uh, you know, what if they just, just hearing that maybe starts the, you know, conversation and doing something else. So again, again, uh, obviously don't know. And then um, I do have some other questions of you, but Ricardo's got another, Ricardo stay until the end, I tell you. Uh, he's going to, we, we'd welcome him on, but that's good. Uh, all right. Uh, he had a recruiter wanted to charge him $6,000, uh, to get me the job I want. Well, sure. There are some headhunters left some it's like, um, oh, it's like travel agents. They're few and far between. They're a dying breed. Most, I mean, I, I take trips uh, quite often. I plan all of my own things because it's easier now, right? Uh, recruiters, or excuse me, headhunters, they're just not that uh, uh, not that common anymore. I know a few. Um, but that recruiter can't guarantee you that job. Uh, I would be really leery of that. And uh, uh, what <laughs> what suggestions do you might have of you for Ricardo? Uh, you know, $6,000 recruiter uh, to get him a job. What do you think? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> David, I must admit, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit with you there. I would 
I'd be a little bit wary. That's kind of my spidey sense is going off right now, Ricardo, when I read that comment on the screen. Um, now, that's not to say recruiters can't get you the job that you want. That is not to say recruiters and headhunters don't have access to roles and companies that you might not have access to. There is definitely a role that we need headhunters and recruiters to play, for sure. I would just look at the, the finer details of how they would fulfill that, you know, for the six thousand um, dollars. I don't know. I always think I'm a, as a business owner. I always think of those marketing agencies who kind of tap you on the shoulder and like, I can promise you, you know, a thousand leads a day, Louise. You know, just pay me ten thousand dollars. And I'm like, mm. anyway, so apologize if that's you and you're listening. Um, but yeah, so Ricardo, do your due diligence. Um, you know, I, sometimes we are so emotionally attached to wanting this thing that we end up buying things based on our emotions. And so just take a step back, right? At least for something like this, if $6,000 is a lot of money for you, which for many of us it can be, some of us maybe not, but if it is for you, Ricardo, I would suggest at least give yourself a 24 hour cooling period <laughs> before you go back with the answer, right? You don't, don't feel as though you have to give them any answer on the phone there and then. If they pressurize you, feel free to walk away. Uh, trust your gut instinct about what is best for you and what is the best use of the resources that you have. You will know what is right. Um, ditto to all of that. And this must be a, um, we're getting a few of these today. Uh, Patrick says, same here uh nine thousand uh i believe that's euros and nine thousand euros is more than nine thousand us that's like twelve thousand like uh, maybe eleven uh politely refused so um listen yeah no uh i know there are headhunters out there that stay with you until the process you know until they fulfill that um, there's so much you can do on your own and, but what a headhunter a lot of times can't do, at least in my uh, opinion, um, you know, they can't coach you through finding the right position because what if you end up in that role and it wasn't something, you know, again, um, so Ricardo, I think that, uh, you and my guest might have to at least have, uh, uh, a call uh and i'll leave that there all right um oh hey hello anthony uh all right yeah anthony i already know you have an interview i know i i, I happen to know anthony uh so yes uh you're awesome as well too anthony uh what do you think what do you think that maybe the number one struggle for the average job seeker is today I think it's standing out from the crowd. I mean, right now, um, articles are writing about how it is actually a job seekers market. Uh, I touched upon the great resignation late, uh, earlier, later, earlier, and how some companies are actually struggling, struggling, oh, struggling to hire enough resources um, for the work that they have coming in through the pipeline. So that's great news for job seekers, for you out there. Um, but I think one of the biggest struggles is how do I have myself be seen amongst all the noise. You know, hundreds of applications, sometimes some jobs are thousands of applications. How do you stand out? So I would probably say that's one of the big struggles that I hear. Okay. Um, what do you think, does social media come into play for the average job seeker? I think, well, it depends largely on the role in the industry that you're in. Uh, for sure. So if, for example, you're in, you're going for a marketing job and the job is social media, they will look at your social media. You and I both know that the first thing you do when you see a name, like it could be for a job application, it could be for a date, you will Google the hell out of them. Like, you know, I yes. will <clears throat> maybe Google and have a mini stalk of the people that, you know, I'm about to talk to, perhaps don't tell anyone. Anyway. Um, but be careful about what you have on things like your social media or just publicly. One of the things I always tell my clients is to every now and then to do a digital audit, to do a check of what comes up when you Google your own name, because that is what potential employees will do. So every now and then have an incognito window, open up Google, put your name in there or whatever you believe they will Google about you 
and see what comes up and make sure you are okay with what comes up. Uh, a number of people that I've asked or invited to do this, they have subsequently cleaned up, shall we say, a few of the things that came up. They were a bit shocked. They were like, oh my God, there's a photo of me, you know, downing a, a yard of beer. That's a very British thing. Um, that may not put me in the best light for this, you know, <laughs> senior vice president role I'm going for. Um, uh, but yeah, so uh, social media can definitely play a part. Depends on the role you're going for, but do make sure that you are okay with what shows up in a search. Okay. Did you say a yard of beer? Yeah. That yeah, sounds like this, a lot of beer. It, it is a lot. So you get this really thin, like glass, like the glass blowing is very, very technical here, David, right? And so it's just this long, like <laughs> stick of beer that you fill up with beer. So it's quite slim, but it, it stretches a yard, believe it or not. And you need help to kind of tip it up so it doesn't all flow onto your face. But you need you need some friends to hold it at the other end. To, to, and you're like, slower, 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 you know, not too fast, not too fast. And yeah. Um. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, interesting. Uh, yard of beer. Uh, all right, we know what to look for on your social media here. Uh, <laughs> all right, I got to share this. Uh, how, in, look, uh, Vancouver, we're not talking about Vancouver, Washington, because there is a Vancouver in Washington state, but we're, we're talking up, up north, right? Uh, not too. Anyway, um, top. 21 and i think it ended up, ended up being at uh, what 15 or whatever but top 21 coaches in vancouver of 2021 this is a big deal so i wanted to give you this uh you know shout out so how does this how does this happen there you are <laughs> how does this happen <laughs> It happens because I'm a great coach, Dave. No, I'm just kidding. Right? Uh, well, actually, I'm not kidding. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> my, my coach is going to be like, no, Louise, did you just like out yourself on live TV? Um, no, I have to admit. So a, a lot of people have asked me this. It's like, how do you get on this list as, you know, great coach in the city you're in? And I've, I've got to be honest. It's because I have great clients. It sounds really cheesy, but it is true. I work with great people. I'm so honored to work with great people and they get great results. Right. And so this is the same for you as job seekers. Right. You will get asked by employers and in interviews, you know, what makes you a great hire and what makes you great for the team? And it is all about you really having that that confidence about who you are, really knowing who you are and really just being able to step into your full potential. You know, I talk to my clients a lot about how to step into their full potential and bringing that special source, that special juice only you have to that team, to that role. And it is all about how you can add value to them about why they should hire you. And so you know, remember that when you go in, you know, it, trust that no matter what happens, the outcome of the interview, you're gonna be fine. Trust that it will all work out okay, but also trust that you have a lot to give. You have a lot of value to add. If they see that, that's great. And if they don't see that, that's also okay. So it's really kind of taking that kind of take, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I, look, I, I know that we're anxious because we want the job. And that's why we're anxious when we have interviews. But if you take the approach that you're just, this, I know this sounds just simple, but it needs to be. You have to almost care that you don't get the job when you're having that interview. Now, not at so much that you're just laid back and going, yeah, I don't care. I'll answer it or, you know, whatever. But no, uh, but yes, uh, you just need to be yourself and, and realize that there's not much you can do convincing. They're going to hire who they think is going to be the best fit for that role. You can just show them your best self and hope that might uh, fit. So, um, hey, hello from Belgium. We're all over the globe today oh uh, and and we have a question here uh let's see here uh don't you guys think that paying job seekers for advice or help to fix your cv doesn't guarantee you uh gonna get the job that depends on your limitations you know and and so on so um well i look i i take this but then i'll let you uh finish it up uh listen i personally think that everybody should have their resume created by somebody else uh, me somebody uh, there's 
Look, I think there's only two resume writers on LinkedIn right now. I mean, no, we're a dime a dozen. There's plenty of them. There's plenty of career coaches too, but there's only 21 of the uh, of the top ones in Vancouver, Canada, and you're one of them. Uh, but uh, listen, you're too close to the subject matter to write your own resume, in my opinion. Uh, you need somebody to understand what to include and what not to include. And just like you tooted your own horn, I'm going to toot my own horn. Uh, my clients end up getting a lot of interviews because of the resumes I create. And not that I am the best resume writer. I think I'm a very good resume writer. I take what is missing, what I take, what I, what I see and what I don't see, ask my clients questions. I just think that I get, I get what I need out of my clients to put their amazing metrics, accomplishments and achievements in a way that gets their resume in front of people but i truly believe that it is too difficult just like if my roof is leaking you don't want me uh, or or you don't want me to hire you to come over your roof and patch up your roof because i don't know much about that sure i could google it or or, or, or go onto youtube and watch a video but by the time i'm done you know learning how to repair a roof you know i've already flooded my house you really need, you will get more traction. You will land that career faster by hiring somebody to write your resume. And same goes with coaching. If you're struggling to identify areas or industries or things about yourself, um, it is, you might in fact find them all, but how long? Hiring a coach will shorten the time it takes you to find out those things you need to do uh, or that you need to learn about yourself to then go and really start, uh, you know, uh, crushing it there. So uh, traditional resume or different style. So, oh, wait a minute. I didn't. You have anything you want to add there? <laughs> well, you know how earlier you asked me what some of the biggest struggles are for job seekers, and I mentioned it was about standing out. I'm with you, Dave. If you work with a professional writer, a professional resume writer, CV writer, perhaps even a recruiter or headhunter for the other parts of it, it will help you stand out from the crowd. As somebody who has hired so many people, hired and fired, but hired so many people. I know what it's like to receive hundreds of resumes and they literally, your eyes glaze over. They all look the same. They all sound the same on paper. Because remember, a lot of the times your resume might be the first point of contact that a recruiter or an employer has with you. Also, secondly, just because you are aware of your life experience and your career experience, number one, doesn't make you the most objective person at viewing what needs to go on a resume. And number two, <laughs> you may not be the best writer. I'm sorry, lovely people watching this, but you know, I'm an okay writer. I still hire a copywriter, right? I know that my writing is okay, but I still need some help. I can still polish that, especially if I want it to get me a certain thing, a result. And so definitely I agree that we are not the best people to look at ourselves. I often say to my clients, you can't coach yourself. And so it's similar to what you're saying, Dave, where we are not the best person to look over and review our life and put together a resume that's actually going to make a difference. Yeah. Uh, so who is your typical, you know, client? Uh, you know, why do they come to you? What are some common, you know, issues that they're having uh, that uh, they need your assistance? Well, a lot of the clients that are attracted to me are people who are in the the business corporate world, either they are employed and they either want a change of career or they want a promotion, they want to move somehow or just sort out some struggles that are happening with their current role or the current team. You know, I have a background in leadership, team dynamics, psychological safety, so I work a lot with dysfunctional teams. Or uh, they are people who are trying to figure out what the hell it is that they want to do. So they tend to come to me for work, or job, career-related type things but they stay with me because after we kind of sort all of that out, we we look at the other aspects of you as well, like who you are, why are you here? You know, what legacy do you want to leave behind? What, what purpose is there for you? Like what difference are you here to make to other people? 
not just to yourself and in your immediate circle. And so that's where it almost gets a bit existentially, uh, but that's where all the gold is, all the juice is. And that's why clients stay with me for a long periods of time, because that converse, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And it's, it's just self-exploration and discovery to allow you over time to really be um, the most fulfilling version of yourself. And so that life actually flows for you. It's satisfying, it's fulfilling, it's joyful, and it seems relatively easy. Okay. I, I agree. Uh, Joseph says a traditional resume or a different style. Well, I mean, there's kind of basically, you know, there's chronological, there's functional, there's maybe a hybrid between the two of them. Uh, Joseph, and I'm happy to, if you just, if, if you're struggling or whatever, just send me your resume. I'll just provide some tips and advice, but please everybody stay away from the resumes with the, this is, uh, I promised to only take 30 seconds because otherwise I'll get on a rant. Stay away from the ones with colors and graphs and graphics and whatever. It, they just, it, there's not enough substance on there. Yes, it just needs to be the boring resume with white paper or not paper because we don't even do anything on paper, but you know what I mean? White background, uh, black type, uh, full, um, but uh, graphs, graphics, graphs, a, a lot of times the, the software that, uh, uh, it's kind of that the system uses to scrub that stuff will have a hard time. And usually those colorful graphic resumes just don't have enough against substance to really tell us all those amazing things that you've done. Uh, but we're getting a lot of, uh, let's see, he's got a, what is a traditional format resume or should one use more creative non-traditional formats? The answer is no don't <laughs> uh send me your resume i'll provide you some free advice and tips and guidance and my resume do's and don'ts uh sharing those and and why or why not to do uh certain things so anyway so lots of lots of uh lots of uh comments everybody on linkedin uh, I know we got a couple people on Facebook or YouTube because it shows me that I do. So if you're watching and you don't want to necessarily, or you don't have a question, at least tell us where you're, uh, you know, watching us uh, from. Uh, LOL. Yes, don't do that. Yeah, don't. No, that's a, that's a no no. Uh, and uh, Ruth from Nigeria. So we're all over the place. U.S every continent let's see if we can get antarctica north and south poles on here as well hey um all right so i know that you have some things to kind of so if somebody wants a little bit more you know from you right uh, i think that you had mentioned that maybe if i pull your pull your leg a little bit that uh, <laughs> maybe there's some things that you could provide the the, the people that are listening today Watching. Well, if you're watching live, um, yeah, okay, let's let's do this because I really want to show my appreciation to the to you who are actually tuning in live today and watching us live. So this is, I'm sorry, people who are watching this later. This is only for the people watching live. Um, if you if you're on Instagram, I'm also on Instagram. So I invite you if you're watching this live, if you take a photo of you watching this live live. <laughs> Uh, put it on Instagram. You can put it as a post, as a story, as a reel. It's really up to you. But tag me. My handle is Louise Lee Coaching. Louise Lee Coaching. Tag me so that I can find you, so that I can see it. And the best post, story, reel, whatever you like, that I see between now and the end of today, I will get in touch with you and give you a complimentary coaching session. All for you. One on one. I love so, yeah, it. Do it. Instagram uh, or Facebook at Louise Lee Coaching. Tag me, take a photo of you watching this, and I'll pick the best one by the end of the day. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. Take a photo. You know, put it up. You know, put it up here. Something like you know, something like this or whatever. Right. So uh, doesn't have to be perfect. Don't worry about. Uh, don't worry about that. And uh, we have somebody watching us on YouTube. You know, I must admit, I just created the YouTube channel just for my live. So there are not a lot of subscribers, but thank you. Make sure that you continue to watch and subscribe. And yeah, if, if you, I post all of my uh, lives on YouTube so people can uh, watch. You're just not going to get the, um, the freebies, the freebies. But there's something else that 
maybe the people that are watching live or not watching live can still get from you. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. So we spoke a little bit earlier about really starting to get a greater understanding about who you are and what's important to you. You know, what's unique about you? Partly because it allows you to actually be, sounds cheesy again, but actually be your best self, right? But also partly because it allows you to actually distinguish what's important to you and not and actually just get rid of all the noise. And so a lot of that is really understanding what's important to us and what our values are. So what I have for you, whether you're listening live or whether you are watching this after on the recording, is if you go to my website, which is louiselee.com, I have a free list of over 250 values to help you and guide you through revealing what your own values are. Because if you can't name your values, if you don't know what they are, it's very difficult to be aligned with them, to actually walk the talk. And when you walk the talk, as I mentioned earlier, life becomes a lot more fulfilling, a lot more satisfying for more of the time. And you get to really allow yourself to make better decisions because you get to really look at what's important and make decisions through that. So I often call your values your life compass. So that's it right there. You'll see it on the screen. If you go to my website, that is the box. Give me your name and fill in your email address and it will be straight in your inbox, fresh from me. Right. <laughs> I just want to show people how easy this is. <laughs> Are you doing it right now, David? Sign me up. Oh my God. I got to pick traffic lights. Oh, yeah. heavens. Are, no. are you a robot? Right. Are you a robot, David? I am not a robot today. <laughs> hey, there's one more step. There's yeah, more absolutely. Step. That, that's you gotta, okay. It's in your email. It should be in your inbox. I there you go. Love it. Oh, yeah. I love it. Damn traffic lights. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's see. Uh, all right. So uh, you had mentioned that you couldn't figure out how to watch LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is working on a process because LinkedIn Live, yes, there's no, all you, what you have to do is either watch for it, follow that person, um, or go to their uh, profile page and then you can click on the, 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 the banner. But LinkedIn is working on it right now, making it much more easier to like, pe for people that want to get the link to watch it but right now linkedin knows that it has some issues with that because again it you don't get alerted you just have to go to that person's uh, linkedin page um listen i love linkedin i am on linkedin often 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 very often and um but they are behind the times on a few different things, unfortunately. LinkedIn, I love you. But uh, again, they're a little behind the times on a few different things. Even Microsoft owns them. You would think that they would, you know, level up their game. But uh, yeah, not so much. All right, let's see. Um, all right, we do have a question. It all starts with a good resume. But just um, as job seekers put time and effort into creating a professional CV, our chances of landing a job still depend on the knowledge and honesty of the recruiter and lots of other stuff, of course, and networking. You know, you mentioned this, hundreds of people, sometimes a thousand people are applying. That's crazy that are applying for the same jobs. A long time ago, decades ago, it was just people that were unemployed that were aggressively looking, right? But now underemployed, overemployed, whatever, uh, people are applying. So, you know, you really have to network and build that network. Sometimes, you know, uh, getting refer, you know, getting a, a referral or whatever, obviously, is is the best. But there's so many best practices that you can do on LinkedIn, uh, you know, to get you that edge, get a referral. Um, uh, you know, what, you know, do you have any advice? You know, uh, because what if you do have that? perfect resume along with the other hundred people that have that perfect resume and the same experience as you. What are some different things maybe they can do to uh, network to try to find that? Uh, mm -hmm. land yeah, that job? I love what you're saying about networking, David, because there's a saying uh, that your net network is your net worth. Your network is your net worth. And one of the things that I uh, often share with my audience, my clients, uh, my students is the quality of your life is really based on the quality of the relationships that you have. 
the relationship with yourself, but your relationship with other people too. And you are right. You will be amazed when you invest in those relationships. And I'm not just talking about the ones in your closest circle. I'm talking about those acquaintances. They're not even colleagues. That You know the ones. The acquaintances that you haven't spoken to in two years, three years, five years, ten years. You will be surprised that when you reach out to them again, A, how happy they are to hear from you, right? And B, if you share a little bit about what's going on for you. And then if you ask them how you can help them, right? Or if there's anything you can do for them, you will be amazed at how often they might respond to you, they might reciprocate for you. And often it's those kind of lukewarm people. <laughs> that, that's a terrible way of describing them, but you know what I mean. You know, they're not like your best buddies, but they're also not your, you know, your grandma. But it's often those acquaintances that can really open doors for you that you least expect. So, don't underestimate the network you already have. So for all of you listening out there, if you are wanting to build your network, definitely build your network, go and find new people, you know, get on tools such as Lunch Club, go and meet new people every week. But on the flip side, nurture and invest, water the garden of your current network as well. Reach out to them, check in on them, give them updates, ask them for updates, ask how you can help them. Maybe share how they might be able to help you if they are interested and you'll never know what might come up. Good. No, that's very good. And you know what? I think that we think that a lot of times that, well, that person can't help me. So there's no reason in reaching out to him or her. Well, listen, it's not, it's not about that person that can directly help you. What if they just got off the phone with somebody that works at the organization that you want to apply for? So, you know, it's and the same thing with LinkedIn. You know, I just hit 50,000 followers yesterday. Now, why? Now, again, I'm not tooting my own horn. OK, I, am. Um, I have I have close to 20,000 connections, 50,000 followers. But why is that important? Why do I bring it up? Well, almost daily, somebody will come to me and go, David, uh, I saw that you're connected to this person. Um, I wanted to reach out to him or her because of this. Can you make an introduction? Well, let me see how I know that person. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I know that person. Let me see what I can do. And boom, there you go. So again, it, it's not when you when you expand your network, whether it's on LinkedIn, whether it's, you know, in person, you're, you know, uh, again, it's not about the connection that you have, but your connections connections everybody wants to be helpful to reach out if you're struggling reach out because you never know but that's where growing that uh, network on linkedin can be so valuable so valuable so um i'll just wrap this one up um look might be secure in your current role but uh you know you feel like you need to move on but nervous about moving on right maybe you've been comfortable in that role you love your salary the benefits are great you know but you're nervous about you know how do, you know i don't know if you know it's good the grass is going to be greener right so if that was your client how would you walk them through that process of maybe not feeling trapped but feeling comfortable right they feel comfortable in their role but might feel the need to move on, but nervous about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's super common. And uh, it, it, we all go through that process where we know that we might want something else, but we're not yet far enough down the path to really be ready yet or feel or believe as though we're ready yet to actually go for it. Um, so I totally relate to uh, what you were saying and what that comment was about. So thank you for asking that question. So a, a lot of the times when I work with my clients, one of the things that I really love working on with my clients, and they love it too, is mindset, because it all starts here, how we see ourselves, how we come across, it all begins here. It all begins what we tell ourselves about ourselves and what we tell ourselves about the world around us. And so if we are feeling a little bit nervous about wanting to take the next step, there are a few different things that we can do. Um, so first of all, it's it's kind of like playing the worst case scenario game. You know, often I have uh, friends, clients, you know, they'll send me text messages. Oh my God, Louise, I saw this job posting. Um, it's a little bit out of my league. Uh, I, I like where I am. I'm not unhappy. Should I go for it? Right. 
And so uh, sometimes we play the worst case scenario game and I would say, well, what's the worst case scenario if you do? But also what's the worst case scenario if you don't? You know, what do you know will happen if you do, but what won't happen if you don't? Or what will happen if you don't? So sometimes when we frame, when we look at our life through questions, and see what comes up for us. That's where we sometimes get insights that we didn't see before. And so a lot of my clients are like, oh yeah, actually I have nothing to lose you know, by just applying. Because just by applying, it doesn't mean I'm gonna say yes, right? There have been a couple of times where oh, I've applied for jobs, it's gone really well, but as it turned out for me, it wasn't the right fit. You know, So I've declined. So remember, you're not like, let's get married forever and ever, just because you send in your resume, it doesn't work like right. that. So don't worry. Again, be aware, mindset wise, this is another mindset tip. Be aware of that all or nothing thinking, that black and white thinking. It's like, if I apply, that means like I'm in, that means I'm out of this job. Oh my God, that it means the end of the world. It doesn't, it's just one step. And then the other tip I would give would be, if a career change or a direction change feels really big for you right now, it feels really overwhelming. One of the really, uh, key things that you can do is to, to break it down. It's it's always that way. And I'm sorry for any vegan or vegetarian friends on this call, and I don't need a lot of meat too, but um, if there's that saying, you know, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. And it's the same thing. If you have this idea of what you want to do, but it feels overwhelming, so much so that you are procrastinating and you're not actually doing anything about it, you talk a lot, but you're not doing a lot, Break it down. What is the one teeny tiny smallest, simplest step that you can take? All right. So even if it's looking up that company and just checking out who they are and what they're about, it could be making one tweak to your resume. It could be just looking up David Alto's LinkedIn profile and seeing if he's a good person to work with, or maybe my profile, see if I'm a good person to work with. One small, tiny step, you will start building that momentum again to get you where you want to go. So if it feels overwhelming, break it down. No, I like that. I like that. Uh, I'm looking at some other questions here. I know we got to wrap it up soon. Uh, yeah. So I network on a daily basis and, and uh, actually got help and gave help. You know, giving uh, LinkedIn is a very giving community. Um, very giving community. Uh, I know when I have a question, I just put a post about it and boom, or if I needed a service or I need help, I post about it. I, I get a ton uh, it is a very giving community. It is not Facebook. Uh, you will have, uh, I, have some Facebook. Uh, I am, I might post things, but I don't, I don't interact. I, I, I just, I, I, I'm lucky enough that I found a great home in, uh, LinkedIn. Uh, that doesn't mean that I don't post this to, uh, Facebook and, uh, but, uh, again, very giving community if you need help ask out reach out and i think though this will be our last one networking is priceless and have exp uh, exposure in your network to give you visibility but what else you know might you do to get the job you want okay you got an amazing resume you're networking is there anything else yes uh, but before we get there i just want to if i may just pick up on that comment that Rashida wrote. Um, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. She said, yes, I network on a daily basis and give help and got help, which is an amazing feeling. If any of you out there are feeling that lack of fulfillment, that lack of engagement, that lack of vitality in your life, for want of a better phrase, a lot of it can come down to helping others. Helping others just because you can. And when we help others just because we can for no other reason, it doesn't have to be for money, it doesn't have to be for anything else. It's not a reciprocal favor, it's just because we can. The, uh, the feeling that we get is exactly as she described, it's amazing. It makes us feel alive again. Because what happens is we get out of this world that is just about us. We get back into the world and we realize that we are actually part of a much wider community and that we make a difference. And there is nothing more fulfilling in life than that, than knowing that you make a difference to other people. So if you're feeling a little bit stuck or disengaged in anything, even at work, help somebody just because you can, right? Not because you want something back from them. Just go, just go help people. Imagine the world if we all did that. Oh, but anyway, right? That's <laughs> that's a kind of a how I landed doing what I do. You know, I volunteered here. I volunteered here. I 
gave away free advice, free coaching, free resume, free LinkedIn profile makeovers. I gave it away for free just because I still had a day job, right? And and that kind of, I'm like, hey, I'm good at this. Hey, I'm good at this. Hey, I'm, hey now I do this all the time. So again, uh, sometimes by giving we more about ourselves. I still remember you. You're talking about that, you know, the, the first time that somebody wanted you to teach and you're like, I don't, I, why, me, who, that person? No, me, right? So again, uh, go out and do do some different things. Do some good, because I tell you what, when you volunteer or provide free advice or whatever, I sometimes feel better that, that I think than the person that uh, that is receiving it. So yes, uh, so very, But but is there anything else? That we could do besides having an amazing resume and, and networking well it's actually related to that what we just said is to go out and and just give back to that community because if you when i hire people and i've spoken to some other people who hire and they say the same thing we're not just looking for somebody who can do the job that's never just the case otherwise we just hire a bot quite frankly we're looking for people who which is almost more important, a cultural fit with the team. We're looking for somebody who is multifaceted, who has a lot of complementary strengths. And so being able to show that and demonstrate that, especially in our interview situation when you are in front of the person, either virtually or in person, is so key. And having examples to draw on will make your life so much easier. And so going out and doing some of those things will give you tons of examples to draw on. But a lot of it is that, you know, what really differentiates you from everybody else? And how can you help and contribute? Because as I mentioned earlier, everybody is looking for people who will add value to the team, contribute, bring great culture, bring great mindset, but also great attitude to work. You know, people who are willing to speak up for their ideas, people who are willing to be caring for each other as human beings, not just as work colleagues. So think about how you can demonstrate that, not just say it on your resume, but to actually demonstrate it through actions and stories that you can draw upon. And solid advice. And uh, we're coming up on 58 minutes. So we're going to wrap this up. It goes by quick. Uh, and yes, you said her name correctly. So yes, uh, good job there. All right. Uh, absolutely. Last one. And then we'll get ready to sign off. Uh, so uh, Patrick's been looking for some time now. It looks like Maybe they think he's been overqualified for some of the positions. And now, you know, I guess you have to ask yourself, are you applying for positions going in, you know, uh, really overqualified? Does the cover, let, you know, look, you know, this is the one time I, 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 per, I, I personally don't think cover letters are needed anymore with a great LinkedIn profile and a resume. I just don't. Uh, but in this instance, you better in a cover letter explain or this is where the big networking comes in because i mean there's even been positions when i've when i've hired uh, in the past where i see somebody that's overqualified and i do just i don't even call them um but there's got to be a reason so i don't know i think that would be a definitely a conversation uh you know to have um uh you know off of this and uh, you know see if um uh, you know you can define more of those roles that so people that don't think that you're, um, you know, overqualified. Uh, any advice? Somebody that's overqualified, that's being told maybe they're overqualified more than a few times. Yeah, I love what you said, David, about being clear why you're applying for this job. Uh, and you could maybe even be frank about it. it. It See what you think about this, Patrick, about whether this feels good for you to say, you know, I may appear overqualified or I may appear as though my qualifications don't match um, the person you're looking for, but, right, so you're really actually calling out what is obvious, you're calling out the elephant in the room. Um, so yes, there is that side of it too, um, because as somebody who's hiring people, the last thing I want is to hire somebody who is great but overqualified and then feel always worried in the back of my mind that they're just gonna leave because the job is not uh, challenging enough for them or not fulfilling enough for them and things like that. So if there, if there is a very clear reason why you're going for that role, be clear about it, be upfront about it, just so that they know. The flip side of that is, David kind of touched upon this, which is kind of really getting clear with yourself why you are applying for jobs that apparently you've been told time and time again that you're overqualified for. 
is this something that is, is there inner work that needs to be done, quite frankly, right? Um, so there's this outer stuff that's it's really communicating to who's hiring you about why you think you're a good fit for the role, even though you might be overqualified. And then there's the inner work, which is why am I applying for this kind of job, if that's the feedback that I'm getting. All right, so it's the internal awareness as well as the external awareness, which is the feedback you're getting. There is a possibility, and I've only done this a few times, but you can dumb down your resume. Um, uh, but it's still in the interview. The problem is, is they're going to find out that you're super amazing and then know you're overqualified anyway. But um, yeah. Uh, so anyway, I think there's some, definitely there's going to be some follow up. So I'll make sure that everybody has access to your uh, Instagram because we might have mentioned, you know, some stuff before. So if you're hearing it now, too late now. Uh, but <laughs> But if you go to her website, she'll provide you with some advice and guidance absolutely for free, just like I did. And I did get that uh, uh, email uh, with uh, with my list of values that I will be looking at later today, just so I, you know, look, because I might not need, you know, your services and you might not need mine. But what if I come across somebody knowing what you provide? So, again, people, this is why we open the door to networking and truly connecting with others just that are like-minded do not go down the narrow path of only connecting people in your lane you are gonna miss out on so most of my connections do nothing remotely of what i do or what i've done in the past they are super active on linkedin i've connected with them for whatever reasons but again um Yes, when you build that network, I tell you what, you know, think good things will come to you. Even regardless, uh, maybe people come to you for advice and we've already we already learned today that providing advice makes us more feel warm and fuzzy anyway. Uh, and it's just good. So, hey, thank you for coming on uh, the show today and sharing your knowledge with our audience. Uh, I had a I had a great time. I hope you did. I did. It was super fun. All right. Well, hey, look, be on the lookout for some messages and sending out all those uh, emails with uh, that list. I'll put everything on Facebook, on YouTube, uh, here on LinkedIn so people know how to get in touch with you. Um, what's the easiest way for people to reach out to you? Uh, well, there's a few different ways. Uh, you can go to the website and put your name and email in that, and then you'll get communication from me and you'll get that email address, my own email address, um, sent to your inbox. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, um, connect with me on LinkedIn. If you do connect with me on LinkedIn, and this is a little extra tip, always, always add a note. You know how LinkedIn gives you the option to add a note? Always add a note. Tell the person, uh, if you have met them, like, like here, tell them, oh, you know, I watched your interview with David Alto, or I met you at so-and-so. Or if you don't know them, explain to them why you're getting in touch. Always add a note, right? If you add a note, it's going to raise the probability I will click accept. So add a note, find me on LinkedIn, and you can send me a message directly there too. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you for showing up today. We had a great time. No hiccups whatsoever, and we provided a ton of value. Uh, I know there's going to be plenty of uh, comments afterwards, so I'll go and uh, comment because we got more comments, but uh you know only an hour long only an hour long show and we've already gone over by by three minutes so again thank you for showing up today and everybody for showing up around the globe i really appreciate it make sure you're following make sure you're following her on linkedin at least hit the follow button go on over to instagram go to the website and uh anyway hey this is this is this is all Hey, fantastic show. Thank you. Fantastic questions to everybody. And uh, again, thank you. We'll try to do this every week around the same time. We'll have another guest on uh, next week. And Luis, I, I want to have you on again sometime. <laughs> It'll be a pleasure and an honor. To All, right. Again. All right. Let's make it happen. So we'll make it happen. We will make it happen. So everybody i want to make sure that you're always innovating and taking action i hope all of you make the rest of this week your best week ever bye for now everybody <laughs>